Well, Maggie, it's great to see you. It's, we're here on the range again. It's a great <gasps> place to be. Range Back on the range. Again. Home so, on the range. Home on the range. It's a beautiful place. I love it here. Thanks for always letting us come here and film, by the way, too. Oh, my gosh. You are yeah. so welcome. Well, thanks for coming here and Heck hanging yeah. out. I love this so, place. This is perks of having friends that have cool jobs. And then, right. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. It's perks of, thanks so, for having a cool job, Maggie. Oh, my gosh. Thanks for having a cool job, too. So, Amen. Oh, wow. Um, hey, we were just talking about uh, kind of our skill set, which is very novice, very much a lot of habits we learn just from being young, maybe the movies. Maybe Arm, armchair lot, expert yeah, advice. Yeah. Not, and some good advice as well in there. Uh, but we're not experts with that being said, but there are some skill sets that we work on, which everybody should, if you're acquiring firearms, you should be training and practicing. Yes. Now, what something that I've noticed you do is uh, you said in a, a video about a month ago, like shoot left handed. Yes. And that's awesome. Cause uh, <laughs> what I learned was I was taught one day how to shoot left-handed but that's with one hand mm -hmm. one-handed and, and I do you know I'll kind of talk about talk about what I was taught that day but honestly I haven't practiced it since then I was taught that day practiced it that day and haven't done it since uh, but you do it quite a bit so do you mind sharing kind of what your left-handed shooting experience I, I don't do it quite where a you bit learned it, how you practice <laughs> that kind of thing I, I do have a very very small amount of um, non-expert experience at this. <laughs> so uh, your dominant hand can run anything flawlessly without your brain really having to give it thought. When you are practicing with your non-dominant hand, you really actually have to give it thought and yes. go through every single one of the steps. And because you are training at a novice level, all of a sudden, the advice that you have taken and disregarded throughout your entire life suddenly all comes rushing back and you're like, okay, so now I have to put mm -hmm. the game face on and I have to think of every single step I take as I am squeezing that trigger. I am thinking about the laser focus of where your eyes are gonna be, of lining up the sights to the target, you think about the structure and the strength of your grip. You start to think about your stance and your form and where all of a sudden all your fingers are because suddenly you have maybe way too many of them and it's just not comfortable <laughs> to hold or what was comfortable to your dominant hand maybe isn't as comfortable so to your non-dominant hand. So there's a process of relearn, oh. kind of like just really thinking about everything. You're retraining, but you're retraining without all the bad habits that your dominant hand already has. Okay, I like that. So, I like that. Okay. And, and it's amazing because when you watch people shoot with their non-dominant hand and you give them lessons, they'll pay attention more because they're like, oh, this is new and this is Interesting. weird. Interesting. It's, it's weird, it maybe doesn't feel right, it's not comfortable, and they'll make all kinds of excuses. Now, if you don't mind me, because kind of the one thing that, that, I, that I think a lot of people struggle is with shooting the other hand is, so I'm right eye dominant and I'm right handed dominant, so that lines up real nicely. It doesn't matter when you well, shoot with both eyes open. <laughs> Well, that is true, but you still have to get that over. You have to get that in line with your right eye because you still, even with both eyes open, you're not aiming with your non-dominant eye. You just have it open. You're, you're aiming with you're, your... You're aiming with, with both eyes to your target. Um, and I guess what I was getting at, and, and we, we've already checked this gun because... Yeah, we, 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 we have. We've gone through this and watched the last one. <laughs> so what I learned that was important for me was the grip of the gun and that these two little fingers right here, your middle finger and your ring finger are the ones that have all the strength that's of true. the grip. Yeah, so if your pinky just disappears one day, well, heck, you, you didn't need that for um, firing purposes anyway, because it's all right here mm -hmm. in the palm of your hand and these fingers squeezing a lot against of truth it. To that, yes. um, right. So your thumb is going to rest below the back strap of the gun. This is the beaver tail of the gun right back here if it happens to have one of these. Some of them are larger or smaller, but it fits right back there. 
Um, and then your finger, if it is long enough, would probably reach up and grip the top of the frame. My grip, that is where it is comfortable right there. And I can still get to the finger. Um, when you think about shooting with your non-dominant hand, you Because when you shoot left hand, you're gonna use both hands. You, like you're gonna you shoot, are. Which you should, because the only reason I was taught that was in case your right arm is immobilized. Yeah. Then here's this other option, was the only really reason he taught that. And my training has come from a lot of people, not just in professional teaching positions and um, professional experts in their field, which is firearms, but a lot of people on a competitive level um, training and competing with firearms too, that you know, they're passing down some of their knowledge and personal experience as well. So you want with the trigger finger hand, whichever hand you are training with to be your dominant hand at that time, holding the gun, and this is going to be shoving forward. You are putting mm -hmm. all of the force of pushing forward with this arm while this arm wraps around and pulls it back. So in essence, you're gonna be locking- Kind of like a push and pull you're, resistance. You're locking yeah, yeah. this gun into a push pull um, with your dominant and your non-dominant hand. Um, your thumb really always just, in the way. just kind it's of awesome. always gets in the way. <laughs> and, I've, and I've heard some people say, well, just let it hitchhike out to the side if that's comfortable. Uh -huh. Yes that is comfortable, or um, some people will wrap it down around like that. Other people will I tell like you just not to do it. By the you other can thumb. just yeah. lay it right there <laughs> just on gently the gently lay top. it by the other thumb, yeah. But when the gun does go off, um, if you are really thinking about, as we checked again for the 12th billionth time, um, when you are thinking about that trigger pull, and you should be thinking about it with every single millimeter that that trigger moves back you need to be thinking about that pull and mm -hmm. how much pressure and force it takes when it does go off it will surprise you mm -hmm. and when it surprises you that bullet's already out the gun the noise is already made and then you start jumping and shaking yeah but that yeah. bullet's already through the target and is most likely exactly so you don't mind me asking so it. how do you when you're shooting left-handed how because i assume you're right eye dominant is that correct? I, yeah. Okay. So do you, is there any, maybe, yeah. is there any need to pull? I mean, you could just, you're good though, like that. You I, don't need to pull it over. No. Like um, just, you're good. It, it all goes back to shooting and with both eyes open. Right. Um, <laughs> but even then still, you still got to get that one eye lined up. You do you have get to get one that eye one lined. eye lined up. So if you do need to close one eye temporarily, to see your target a Which little clearly <laughs> and, and yeah that your eyes will get tired yeah. and i don't know if you noticed toward the end of these videos where we shoot multiple guns and we're doing multiple targets down here on the range i'll start to squint I at the, yeah i i caught That's myself because i added them all so i haven't noticed I know. it yeah <laughs> i know i'm doing it because i can feel myself doing it when i get tired i will squint so it, it takes practice it does um, now, so really, so ultimately what you're saying, when it comes down to this, it's really more of realizing you're going to have to relearn. You are gonna, relearning So you got to kind of pay attention everything. to every little thing, kind of how you're gripping it, everything. You're, yeah, um, your grip, you're doing, your as far stance. as the grip, you're doing the opposite of what you normally would be doing, which does feel very, uh, very awkward. Oh, it feels um, strange and then uh, paying attention to every little movement. Yeah. So, and, and then just making sure you're lining up right. The whole time that you're doing it. Yeah, that's, that's really, you know? it is, your brain is seriously thinking and analyzing every little moment of what goes together to make a trigger. You're thinking about all of it. And then there's also your breath and your heart yes oh gosh yeah yeah oh it's, there's more but so wait more that. Yeah, but yeah, wait yeah. you do have to control your breath and you do want to make sure you're in a place where your heartbeat isn't just racing and your mm -hmm. adrenaline isn't too high unless you have no choice unless you have no choice but when you practice 
you have the opportunity to practice at your own pace, your own speed, and your own comfort level, not anybody else's. And some people will get comfortable sooner than others. Some people will be okay saying, yeah, I'm not quite there yet. I could use some more lessons and help. And right. those are usually, that's, okay. that's, that's a good great. place to be. Those are the people I want to hang out with. Cause everybody that owns a firearm or is thinking about owning a firearm should be thinking, I'd really like to get more training and more help. Yes. Everybody. Oh yes. Even if this is your 50th year shooting competitively, you should find somebody that it can teach you something and you should learn a little oh bit. Oh my gosh. Everybody. Everybody should. And no one is too old or too no. young to learn this. This is knowledge that has been around for centuries mm -hmm. before our generations even existed. So, and it has been trusted to folks much younger than us mm -hmm. and to folks much older than us too. So having the knowledge available and to take advantage of that right. available right. knowledge is such a gift. <laughs> it's fantastic. Well, gosh, Maggie, thank you so much. This thank is good. Um, I'm going to work on my left-handed shooting. Me too. I could use more practice <laughs> for do. sure. I could use some practice. <laughs> thank you so much, Maggie. Appreciate it. You're so welcome, Mark. All right, see you next time. Bye, everybody.